Alrighty, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, we have a big fight going down. Unified MMA 41 is happening on September the 24th, and the Super Lightweight Championship is up for grabs. Hardware at 165 pounds. Shane Campbell versus Michael Hill. Going to be a great bout over at River Cree Resort and Casino and on UFC Fight Pass, and happy to be able to talk to Shane again. How are you feeling, man? I imagine pretty euphoric leading into this one. Oh, oh absolutely. This has been a, a huge... Uh break between fights for me the longest of my career so so excited to finally get back in there yeah for sure and obviously i imagine a lot of the hurdles with the pandemic were part of that there was there any level of uh, frustration at any point just not being able to get there and compete or just to you know keep training honing the skills trust the process and things will eventually open up kind of mindset more so yeah i think uh frustration has been a universal emotion for everyone here but, sure. but uh, the, the yeah, the, the whole thing put a wrench in my my plan for sure over the last couple of years. And that plan, from what I can tell, at least on social media, is to carve out a path to get back to UFC. There is that wow. sort of what you're looking at, or? Well, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm running out of time in my old age here, so I got a got a couple good, you know, high profile fights in before I'm done, but. For in the last two years, I was, you know, 32 to 34, which is kind of like a man's prime years. So I never got to fight in those those prime years. So it's kind of do or die here. I get a couple more in before I'm done. And yeah, time waits for no man. Absolutely. And just, you know, what a tough test you're taking on here, just in the sense of like, I feel like guys out there in terms of available options, like Michael Hill would be the stiffest test there is that kind of why you were intrigued by this fight initially just like two high level guys uh, yeah i think i'm from my understanding he's pretty much the only one across canada that, that accepted it um i we were trying to get me on the last unified and we couldn't work out an opponent so uh this this is an option this is i think you know if, if there's anyone else there's i kind of just lost my first place on topology but uh, uh for across canada but you know if I'm willing to take on anyone right after this. Yeah, I was going to say you yeah, mentioned... It is a bit a tough, because we're going up in weight class for me anyway, right? And he's coming down a little bit. He's definitely going to be the bigger guy. Yeah. Yeah, curious intersection in that kind of sense, but just in mentioning the changing in the topology rankings there, I mean, is there a certain sense of wanting to get out there and, you know, reintroduce yourself in that sense, underscore the ranking there or do you kind of understand it just with the uh, dormant well, period i guess be, being off for so long is like you know you know just that inactiveness is you know, plays it played a huge role obviously but uh oh yeah yeah i i definitely want to be number one yeah i mean a great opportunity to you know prove that here against a high level guy and just yeah when i saw the matchup announced i was quite excited but it seems like you've been preparing with some real high level guys like i was seeing some different picks of you working with guys like jake shields and kevin lee and yeah, just out in las yeah, vegas for a bit yeah. i got i got to do uh quite a bit of sessions with, with jake shields which was he's, he's a a larger guy and, and extremely good so yeah that must have been amazing been well for this yeah it seemed like you were getting in work at extreme couture as well like i saw that picture of you with Francis and Ganu and just talking about how there's even a certain level of utility being surrounded by the power and energy of a champion so it seems like you got a lot out of the time there oh absolutely I, I try to get a lot out of every gym that I end up going to right uh oh yeah it's funny the 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 the, the tricks and uh stuff that you'll you'll learn in the fight game it's not, not always where you'd expect to find it but uh yeah I was at extreme for over three months training daily and got over 150 rounds of sparring in feeling pretty good yeah and i loved the you know just lead into that because you had some posts where you were saying came to vegas a few weeks ago with a one-way ticket and a vision of securing that contract there so just i love the i love the focus and just what you're pursuing with just you know leveling up and everything like that there but you talk about trying to level up in the different spaces you're in regardless of the gym there like it seemed like you and robin black were getting in some good work there like around a year or so ago with the breakdown videos can you kind of talk about that just getting to break down the technique and those videos there 
Uh, yeah, and like I said, it doesn't, you know, you could be anywhere in the world, in some remote little city, but, you know, the, the, the people you meet is, you know, everyone plays a role in, in your growth. And Robin, Robin Black there, he's, he's, a, he's a brilliant man in himself and what he knows in the, the martial arts. So it, is, it was a lot of fun working with him. Yeah, that's a great mentality, though, just like whoever you can encounter, just like different skills shored up and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's definitely the the way to be looking at it there, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, if the last couple of years have showed us anything, it's, you know, nothing is forever. So you get the most out of it right now as you can. Yeah, absolutely. You just got to, you know not necessarily count on the fact that there's going to be certain things guaranteed to you and you just got to, you know, get out and, you know, showcase the skills there and everything. But I'm kind of, you know, curious, like just, you know, how we're going to, you know, see things out there and just like, I guess like the recuperation aspects I'm kind of curious about because you seem like you're pretty, you know, you know, well-versed with that, like the oxygen therapy and stuff like that. Can you kind of talk about some of those facets of the, I guess, recuperation end of your prep? Um, absolutely. Yeah. Getting in the hyperbaric chambers, just, you know, getting oxygen to every part of your body is going to heal and, and do, do, uh, extremely well for the body in general. Um, but, 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 you know, as like, as I'm getting older, I've got nagging injuries everywhere. So, uh, that, that aspect is definitely, you know, good and, and, and helping my confidence. That's for sure. Yeah, and it's curious because you're talking about just like what you're looking at in the next bit as a competitor there. You strike me as a guy, like even in mentioning the, you know, Robin Black technique videos there, that a guy who even when you're done competing, you might want to, you know, be a trainer and kind of take on that sort of role. Is that a fair characterization? Yeah, absolutely. I've been teaching for just, almost just as long as I've been fighting and traveling the world, teaching seminars all over. Uh, I have a gym in, in Edmonton here, so... Um, if I was ever allowed to be open, <laughs> then, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah I, I teach people here, wherever I go, I teach people, I do work paths with stuff and, and what, I, I really enjoy teaching seminars. Um, but every little aspect about it, I'm a martial artist and I'm going to be in this for life and this is what I do wherever I go. Yeah, I love the lifestyle minded kind of facet there, but it seems like you've been, you know, back in Canada for a bit, just kind of getting ready for the fight here from the time in vegas whereabouts are you training are you back at toshido mma or where are you getting in work in the lead up to this uh, unified no, fight no I'm up, in, I'm up in edmonton um just uh we're, we're staying here try not to travel around too much it's yeah not a, it's, it's not as easy to <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. and i got a lot of good i got a good group of guys here a bunch of uh 155ers so um i'm working in at the shea bears mostly there with them and, uh, oh awesome yeah yeah it's an awesome space i mean like tanner bozer you know kb buller graham park a lot of bigger lads but just in terms of like the work ethic in the room it seems like those guys are similar to you and as far as like it's a lifestyle minded kind of thing oh absolutely it's you know a champion mindset and the gym is filled with them there so it uh like i like i talked about before the energy is is phenomenal and it, and that helps in, its, in itself. Even if I'm not working with the bigger guys nearly as much, everyone's, you know, the more the more bodies in the room, the the better the day feels. Yeah, absolutely for sure. And just they seem like a great gym in terms of like the friendly rapport and stuff like that. And you seem like a guy who develops friendly rapport with your training partners. Like I saw a video a while ago of you with Bibiano Fernandez. It seemed like you guys were all smiles. Like how important is that confluence of? you know, just getting into work with the high level martial artists, but having that like friendly kind of underpinning to it too. I imagine that makes the learning that much more fluid. Oh yeah. And I mean, just enjoying, you know, that day's training session with your good friends is, is, you know, a beautiful moment in life. So try to get as many of those as we can. No, that's what it's all about, man, for sure. But, you know, I'm kind of curious cause like when I, you know, talk to fighters, I'm curious as to like some of the music they, trained to i've also talked to some fighters where it's kind of like you know inconsequential like whoever grabs the aux cord i'm down for whatever like i saw you had a tweet a while ago shouting out jay-z there so is that the kind of stuff you'd be putting on if you had your druthers or is the music kind of inconsequential whoever can put on whatever at shaved bears 
I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not, I kind of I didn't hear you fully there. Like, what was the question? Oh, no, I was just saying, like, you know, when you have the aux cord at the gym, are there certain, you know, genres you're putting on, or is the music kind of inconsequential with the training dynamic? Uh, I mean, music is very powerful, and you can kind of, you know, change the mood set, but I, I you know, I'm not, uh, I like to listen to everything. I'm not too picky. Yeah, because I've just talked to certain fighters, too, who like to almost train in the silence, like replicate the conditions of fight night more so. So it's not necessarily that. You're just kind of down for whatever genre more so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I have different moods but on different days, so but a wide range of listening to everything. No, no doubt that's the way to be. And also just kind of as a parting question wrapping up here because, like, we were talking about the, I guess, desire to want to – you know, go to UFC and stuff like that. But in terms of some of the other leagues out there, like one championship rise in, like just some of the different rule sets they have, like would something like that intrigue you at all? Or is it like a sole focus on UFC more so? Uh, no, no. I mean, wherever I'm able to get a fight here in the next little while is pretty good. I'm a champion of uh, Fight Night as well as Unified here in Alberta. Oh, yeah. And uh, they offer bare knuckle boxing as well as you know some kickboxing and stuff so i'm i'm down to fight any any rule set really um as long as i'm not you know a complete dog in it but uh yeah you could see me in some bare knuckle boxing or hopefully some muay thai coming up here pretty soon as well that's intriguing so the design i mean you obviously have the history of muay thai and some other disciplines but the goal is to kind of open things up to multiple both of those kickboxing and and Muay Thai, so oh yeah, I no. would like to yeah to go a little bit before I'm done as well. Yeah, that's really intriguing, man. A lot of different options available to you, but again, I want to be mindful of the time and the busy schedule. Always good getting to talk to you, but just in the interest of, like I said, being mindful of the schedule. Is there anything you maybe would want to add as we're wrapping up here, man? Ah, uh, I mean, uh, no, just. We'll, we'll see what happens here on on September, and you know, hopefully, collect another belt. See how that goes, and and yeah, there's going to be tons of options straight away afterwards. But you know, yeah, if uh, if anyone wants to come down and see me at my gym, uh, or there, or I'll be running hyperbaric chambers at at Apothex Naturals as well. So when I'm here in Edmonton, come on down check him out and also check out this fight coming up september the 24th unified mma 41 we've got michael hale and shane campbell vying for that super lightweight championship and it goes on ufc fight pass great getting to talk to you man thanks for making some time and yeah looking forward to the fight and hopefully you enjoy the rest of your day there man awesome you as well thank you very much